It's time to make your great escape And heaven knows you need a break Forget your duties, forget your cares It's good to get away Welcome to Augusta Outdoors. There's a lot of things you might come across if you're hiking in the woods and in a year like this one's been with all the rain, all the plants are full, a lot of leaves. And sometimes when you get home, you have an itchy rash or something that you're not sure where it came from. And we're gonna visit with uh, Dr. Judy Gordon today. And she is a retired professor and biologist, but most importantly, a botanist. And she is going to show us some of the plants that we find around Georgia and particularly in Augusta that can leave you with an itch or a rash or things that you probably don't want to have. Judy, how are you? Hey, Rob. It's good to see you. Thank uh, you for coming out and meeting with us yeah, today. Yeah, I, I was looking at this pine here because it's got several things on it that you want to avoid. Obviously, the poison ivy, leaflets okay. and three, one, two, three. Okay. And then it, it has a, a vine that is hairy. Those are hairy roots that go up. You can see it really well right here. See is that those? how all poison ivy vines are? Or only yeah, the it, when ones? they run along the ground, you just don't notice those hairy roots. It's one of the few vines that has a hairy root so that even when the leaves fall off in the winter, if you lean against these hairy roots, you can pick up the oil that causes the rash. So that's the way you can identify it in the wintertime? Yeah, without the leaves. So leaves in three, it's poison ivy. This is Virginia creeper, and its leaves are in fives, one, two, leaflets really, one, two, three, four, five. Occasionally it'll lose a few, but you look around and you'll, you'll see it's in five, and this is always in threes. Okay. This can also cause some rash in some people, but not nearly as uh, prevalent in rash causing as the, as the poison ivy is. Yeah, this is probably the biggest villain of... Yeah, and not everybody's allergic. Plants. So you don't want to handle this? Are you allergic? I'm very allergic. I've, yeah. I've learned so the am way. I. <laughs> and where does poison ivy grow? Is it everywhere? Is it all the way it's in, in most all of environments? The states. Yeah, and if it runs along the ground, they usually call it poison oak. And some botanists treat it as two separate species, some treat it as all the same. But poison, when it runs along the ground, these leaves are, are a little more jagged, leaflets are a little more jagged along the edges. I've always heard that poison ivy can get you in a lot of different ways. As you mentioned, you can come up against it in the wintertime, the oil from the vines. What about burning it, yeah, cutting people, it? People cut it, they burn it, and if it's a still day and that smoke comes up, the oils are in the smoke, and if you're right. really sensitive and the smoke gets on you, you can get a rash from it. Or if you breathe it? Yeah, and that's happened to a few people who are extremely sensitive. Okay. Then the other thing that's here, which is, can cause some nasty scarring if you get into a big patch, is this. Green briar, the genus is, is Smilax, and Smilax? The, yeah, but see the thorns on it here? And it's funny because there's a creek in Columbia County and uh, a school called Greenbrier, yes, and this is. is the plant that it's named for, which I think is ironic. And is the, does the plant have any, other than just the cutting ability of the thorns, does it have any oil or poison or no, anything? No, okay. it's just the thorns. This part's edible, but you sure would have to collect a lot of it before you get enough to eat. You sure would. And you, if you want to try it, it tastes a little bit like raw green beans. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is usually a huge patch, not, not just like a solitary one like this. This is cow itch. Cow itch? Cow itch. It makes a cow itch? Well, I know, but it can make people itch too. Most people do not have a reaction, but some people can. And farmers used to plant it along their fence rows. And then the cows would get in there and brush against it. And I don't think it causes any problems with the cows, but because they were a lot in fields where the cows were, it got the name cow itch cow when itch. people went in to bring the cows in for milking or whatever okay. and got into the vine. Does it have a more, uh, more common name or is it just cow itch? Just cow itch. Okay. So. And Judy, I've heard of poison sumac. Is that what we're looking at here? No. Uh, poison sumac uh, is the, it has white berries and it's a swamp plant. Okay. All the other sumacs have red or pink berries on them. Of course, this is red. And then I, if you look at the underside of the leaf, this has no hairs on it. So this is smooth sumac. And you can make a drink from these berries. 
okay. and it's a lot like lemonade. But you wouldn't want to do that with the, the swamp one, but it has white berries, so you're not going to get them mixed up. And the, the sumac with the red berries doesn't give you a rash or no. any sort of And you know, do you know it's, it's, it's the same genus as poison ivy, Ruth, oh. R-H-U-S. I did not know that. Yeah, all the sumacs and poison ivy are in the same family, the same genus. So should I be holding this? Oh, well, you, you, this doesn't cause a rash. Okay. <laughs> And, and again, I have made, uh, it's like, kind of like a lemonade drink out of, out of the red berries. Okay, and is sumac a native plant or is it yes. something that was introduced? These okay. are all native. Have you ever been in a stinging nettle patch? Uh, you know, I think I have, but I'm not quite sure what they look like because whenever I realize I've been stung, I'm already through whatever I've walked in. But the plant itself maybe gets about two feet high when it's mature, but it, there's nothing really characteristic of it other than it's got uh, sort of heart-shaped leaves. But if you brush against any of it, you'll know because it has little uh, one inch hairs, maybe a little bit shorter, that are sort of like a hypodermic needle. And if you brush against them, the tip breaks off and it releases this liquid that could cause a rash. And it gets really Like a chemical burns. burn? Yeah, it, it burns and then it can get itchy. And it'll last for about a half hour before it finally lessens. But Rob, one of the things I like to point out is in the fall is pokeweed. Pokeweed? Yeah, okay. because it has berries on it and some people know that the ripe berries, which are dark, are edible, but the rest of the plant is poisonous. Some people make pies from the ripe berries, but the green ones are poisonous as are all the parts of the plant and so you need to know what you're doing when you decide that you're going to make something out of berries that you see around. Is, is poke the same thing as the poke salad you hear about in Yeah, songs? and in the spring, the leaves will still look like this, and you notice the stems are kind of red, so you can sometimes identify it if you have seen where it's growing in the fall. It sends up new shoots. Until they get about this high, you can fix them like you would fix spinach. Okay. But after they get higher than this, they start pulling stuff up from a huge tuber that's underground, and that has the poisonous material in it. Okay, it sounds like something to be... Uh... You have to know what you're doing. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Obviously. Fair enough. The and berries are pretty though. Do they stain if they smash oh, on your shirt? Oh, do they ever. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> and, and the Indians made a dye from this. And they could vary the color by whether they changed, by changing whether it's acidic or basic. Okay. Now I'm going to have stained fingers the rest of the day. That's going to be your fault. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you liked what you saw, be sure to check us out on YouTube and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when new videos come out, and, and also please check us out on AugustaChronicle.com.